It's enough to make anybody sick. This week we recap the devastating tale of GameStop and how a group of a rogue internet bandits decided to target some of the most vulnerable people in society, the rich. When it comes to the stock market, people usually plan on buying low and then selling high, keeping the profits to buy things like hats and mice and light bulbs. Think of it as the long game. But there's also a short game too, known as shorting, which is when a trader actually makes profit when the stock price goes down. It's like my relationship with Clive. I've taken the short position by investing in Clive because I think Clive is on his way down. When Clive doesn't do well, dies. I do well by inheriting what would have been money that went to his children. But shorting can be risky. Ask any fourth wife, secret family or hot assistant. What if, heaven forbid, Clive doesn't die? What? Then my time would have been wasted. What? Then my time would have been wasted. This brings us to the story of a little company called GameStop. The focus of a David and Goliath battle pitting small investors against Wall Street titans. Some are calling it revenge of the nerds and the hedge funds have experienced quite a bit of pain as a result. Hedge funds predicting GameStop's downfall were investing billions in its demise. But a group of amateur investors banded together online and began rapidly buying up masses of GameStop stock, driving the price up and giving the company life. It's like when Clive's family tell him to eat better or take his medicine or stop smoking. No, stop playing God, you dumb nurse. There you go. Millions of amateur traders joined in buying stock, increasing GameStop's value by 1,700%. Crippling investors who had done nothing but dare to dream about making a fortune off another company's failure. Could you hold that for me, darling? Thank you. It's just a way of attacking wealthy people and, you know, I think it's inappropriate. We all got to work together and pull together. This was serious. People could lose their seventh investment property or the money they'd been putting aside for an illegitimate child. Worse yet, ordinary people were benefiting, like this little boy who turned an $800 investment into $4,000, which he probably used on something useless like a toy or a book or something. <laughs> Meanwhile, hedge funds were hemorrhaging cash, like Melvin Capital, which needed a $3 billion bailout to avoid bankruptcy. <laughs> I hope you're happy, Jaden. It was gross. Ordinary people were now manipulating the stock market and making money, the same way hedge funds had been doing for years. I mean, what's next? Ordinary people having access to the same education as the rich? Housing for everybody? For the sake of poor, defenceless billionaires, we can only hope not. Back over to you, Charlie. What about this coffin? Do you like this one? Hmm? You can rest your little head here. 